So we've listened this morning to the well-known story of Noah and the ark. And so many people say, oh, stories in the Old Testament, you know. We can't really believe it. And if you go and research them, they say this should have happened around about 3,000 years ago when this earth was destroyed by the waters. In 1849, as I've told you before, the Royal Library of Ashurbanipal was discovered in the old city of Nineveh, today's Mosul, in northern Iraq. And one of the tablets that was discovered there was a cuneiform tablet called Atrahasis. And it was three tablets. And now this morning, I want to read to you the story of Atrahasis. It dates back more than 20 to 30,000 years. I, Enlil, was to God the earth below, where you went, Enki. You were to undo the chain and set us free. You were in charge of control and holding the balance. But instead, you gave wisdom and knowledge to the people. Your creations have become too numerous and despoiled the earth. You imposed your loads on man. You bestowed noise on mankind. You slaughtered a god together with his intelligence and said, let us make far-sighted. Enki, swear on oath to end this, to create a flood on earth to wipe away all of life. Enki spoke to his brother, Why should you make me swear an oath? Why should I use my power against the people? That is Enlil's kind of work. There was once one named Atrahasis, whose ear was open to his god, Enki. He would speak with his god, and his god would speak with him. Enki made his voice heard to Atrahasis, dismantle the house, build a boat, reject possessions, and save living things. The boat you will build, roof it like the Apsu, so that the sun cannot shine in it. Make upper decks and lower decks, the tackle must be very strong, the bitumen strong to give strength. Atrahasis received this message and gathered the elders. Everything was completed as instructed. Atrahasis put all of his family on board. Then the face of the weather changed. Rain bellowed from the clouds. Bitumen was brought to seal the door. The winds were raging as Atrahasis cut the rope to release the boat. Then the flood came and no one could see anyone else. They could not be recognized in the catastrophe. The flood roared like a bull, like a wild ass screaming the winds held. The darkness was total, there was no sun. For seven days and seven nights, the torrent, storm and flood came on. The goddess Mami watched and wept. However could you and Lil in the assembly of the gods have ordered such a destruction on them? Nintu was wailing. I have seen and wept over them. Shall I ever finish weeping for them? After the noise of the flood had subsided, the warrior god Enlil spotted the boat of Atrahasis. He was furious. We, the great Anuna, all of us agreed together on an oath. No form of life should have escaped. How did any man survive this catastrophe? Anu made his voice heard and spoke to the warrior Enlil. Who but Enki would do this? Enki made his voice heard and spoke to the great gods. I did it in defiance of you. I made sure life was preserved. Exact your punishment for the sinner and whoever contradicts your order. When the Judean people went in exile to the lands of Mesopotamia, they came in contact with this Atrahasis story. 
and they renamed Atrahasis, Noah. And they kept this and brought the story into the Old Testament, but sadly, they had to write it into a history narrative of 6,000 years, although this story dates back 20 to 30,000 years, and maybe even older. The archaeology found numerous tablets in Asurbanipal's library. And if you don't believe me, you can go and check these in the British Museum in London. There was the Sumerian kings list, a list of kings reigning in Sumeria for thousands of years, interpreted in the history of mankind as being a 200 year phase of the Sumerians just before the flood. Scaled down to a short little myth because they do not want us to know. There's the tablets of Atrahasis, the epic of Gilgamesh, the myth of Adapa, and then the instructions of Shurupak. And according to this, Eredu was the first city of five amongst the civilization on this planet, dating back more or less 100 to 200,000 years ago. It was a brilliant civilization. And how do we know that? The king's list tells us the king's names and the years they reigned in these different cities, five of these cities, up to the last one, Shurupak. And out of Shurupak came the king of Shurupak's son, Atrahasis, and he built the ark as Enki told him to do. This correlates with another tablet, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh was a king just before the deluge in Mesopotamia, and Gilgamesh set off on a journey to find immortality. And when he got on this journey, he knew he had to go down to the underworld to speak to the wisdom that is there, and he reached a vast sea that he had to cross over, and there was a boatsman on a boat. And according to the Epic of Gilgamesh, this boatsman was Atrahasis. And he uploaded him on the boat and they crossed the seas. And then Atrahasis looked at Gilgamesh, the king from Mesopotamia, and he said to him, I need to tell you a story. It's a story about a city called Shirupak. You won't know this because you will not remember this. You will, know, you will not know this because in your terms it's a myth. It's something that is, can't be true, but I tell you, Shirupak, destroyed by the great flood. It was a world of worlds. And all of that you can read about in the cuneiform tablets, far older than any scripture we have in the Old Testament. These are not just old stories. These are not just myths trying to explain the history of this world as Jerry showed us this morning. A hundred thousand more or less people lived on this planet and then a catastrophe happened and that number came down to 1,280. And from that, the population on this earth just exploded to the eight billion people that we are officially now. And this morning, I want to introduce you to Shirupak. In 1931, the city of Shirupak was discovered in the excavations between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in modern day Iraq. They started digging down and they found three or four different layers and you can see them on the picture and each layer kind of as deep as the length of a person. Now, we differ in length, but more or less five to six feet. And as they went down, they find the first civilization, which was kind of, kind of developed. There was a civilization, they kind of had some stuff to work with and some 
earthen vessels that they unearthed. And then they went down through that civilization and they came to the next one really primitive. Hunter-gatherer uh, hunter people that was not really deeply developed or there was not really a lot of knowledge available at that stage. And then they hit the void. And they're digging and keep on digging and some of the scientists says this is in vain. There's nothing below this. It's a void that in the end turned out to be 17 feet deep. Now as you know archaeologists work with little instruments just not to disturb anything that they uncover. So it was a painfully slow process. So slow that many scientists, most of them, just abandoned the site and said there's nothing. And then at around about 30 feet deep, they unearthed a civilization that just astonished them. Animal husbandry, agriculture, cuneiform tablets that talked about a government system, vast production of food, metallurgy. You could, they couldn't believe what they unearthed, and then they unearthed some of those earthen vessels in the cuneiform language written on them, the name of the city, Shirupak. And it changed everything. Because suddenly we have the proof that this story of Atrahasis coming from Serupak being destroyed by the Great Flood is truth. It happened not 3,000 years ago, but according to scientists, thousands of years ago. And there's a story around that how people were saved by the gods because in Sherupak, people walked amongst the gods. And the story goes that when that flood happened, they were so destroyed by, do, by seeing what's happening to the earth and the people that most of these gods just pulled back and said, we had enough. We cannot go with this. It is, it is just impulsive. And that's why when those people landed on the Mount of Ararat and civilization had to start over, they went back to primitive ideas, hunter-gatherer, the first civilization on top of the deluge, the void of 17 feet of debris and mud and water that was accumulated during the big flood. So how did this happen? How can we explain this? We have talked about this, that our whole solar system is en route within our galaxy and it moves through the different houses of the galaxies which we call Pisces, Aries and uh, I think we are in Aquarius now and so this whole solar system it takes about 2,000 years to move through one of those houses within this vastness of the galaxy that we call the Milky Way and to complete the whole circle it takes more or less 34 years are 34,000 years for the sol our solar system to move the full circle. And they found that every, more or less every 12,000 years, more or less every halfway through, there's a catastrophe. Some enormous big, some not so big. Some destroyed a lot of stuff, some was across the whole earth, some wasn't. So it depended on where the planets were, how this catastrophe came about, and what was available. Now the Atreasi story talked about the big flood. Our Noah, the Atreasi of the big flood, was caught up in an enormous flood. There was an enormous amount of water. Now I want to take you back 12,000 years to this place you are sitting here today, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. What did it look like? There was an ice cap more than a mile thick here where we are sitting today. And something happened that melted these ice caps in the northern hemisphere within hours. Just imagine the amount of water that was set free when these 
enormously thick ice caps at the end of the previous ice age melt immediately. They say the water from the oceans rose 400 feet, covering all the development and cities around the oceans and in lower lying areas. Scientifically, they prove the flood. This, that is what happened. And then we add the stories of Atrahasis and the other cuneiform tablets that we have to fill in the story. The gods, they say, orchestrated that to destroy humankind because they were too noisy. Because the gods gave them the knowledge and the wisdom to make music instruments, to talk. And all of that created all this noise that the gods decided we had enough. This noise should stop now. I wonder what those gods will say today if they listen to our noise in this world. But the beauty of this is that there is truth in our myths and in our stories. And we are all the same because we come from the same couple of people that survived that. But yet, we live a life that tells us we are so different. We speak different languages. We look differently. We have different cultures and therefore we are apparently different. It's nonsense. We are all the same because we come from the same source. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what language you speak. We are the same. It doesn't matter what your preferences are. We are the same. The gods brought us the wisdom. And they gave it to civilization to develop rapidly. And then it was destroyed and we can prove that now. 12,000 years ago, there was another flood and we have the debris to show it. Before that, there was hundreds and thousands of years of Sumerian kings, some of them reigning 700 to 1,000 years, a single king. They lived long lives. They had wisdom, they had civilization far beyond our wildest dreams. And then it was cut off because the noise became too much. So why didn't we know about this in history? We call it the Galileo effect. When Galileo came up with the theory that the earth is round and circles around the sun and that the earth is not the center of the universe, he met fierce resistance from man-made dogma. Dogma that said the earth is the center of the world and the universe and the people on it is the center of creation. What a load of rubbish. And because of that fierce resistance, that was protected. That narrative that was shoved down our throats for years and years was protected at all costs because it created power to those people in power. Because it keeps you dumb and ignorant. And as long as you are dumb and ignorant, you're a slave to the system, you will get up at five, go to work, come back home, pay your taxes, and shut up. What a wonderful world to reign over. So we will tell them, your history is only 6,000 years long, because we, the church, are in power. And we said last Sunday, when the church reigned over this world, it was a 400-year dark ages. Not ages of light and love, like God is, but dark ages. You can go and research that in your history books. That is the time when the church reigned. So when Galileo said these new discoveries that he made, the Pope would have killed him, but they put him in house arrest and told him, you tell nobody. This is nonsense. This is not the truth. The Galileo effect. So when there's new vis wisdom, it is met with fierce resistance to keep the current structure in place because you should not develop into who you truly are. And who are you truly? And that's the beauty of the story. You are so much more than what you believe. You are not a slave to the system. You are not born to live an eight to five 
work day and pay your taxes and keep quiet. You are not here to follow man-made rules. You are a being of light, sent from the light which we call God. And you are here to spread the light and the truth throughout this cosmos, bringing the knowledge of the true God, the creator of all, the one that we cannot even describe because we do not have the words and the vocab vocabulary in our language to even start to describe the greatness of the creator. Yes, we have Bible stories telling us about Yahweh, the God that is furious and the God that kills women, children and, and men and the God that say, if you do not please me, I send you to hell. That is not the creator of this whole universe. Light is, and that is what we call God. Love is, and that is what our New Testament call God. And Jesus knew that. And he brought the message. You are a being of light. You can do what I do if you just want to believe it. And they silenced him. The Galileo effect created the death of Jesus Christ because they did not want the truth to come out and many after him would try and bring to us the knowledge and they silenced them through man-made dogma through stories that must keep us in ignorance get out of ignorance get to the knowledge of what this world and this universe really is. It is the thought and creation of Creator God and you are part of it. You're an excellent, fantastic being of light and when you start to believe that, you can do anything. And the powers to be in this world fear you. They fear the day that you will really realize who you truly are and what you are capable of and what the possibilities will be when you start really living the light and the love. They fear it because it will tumble their throne down and you will not be a slave to this sick system that we call the world because you will be liberated and free. You are immortal. You do not need to go in search like Gilgamesh to find immortality. You have it inside of you. Because inside of you is the light of God. And this is what these stories tell us. It tells us of the magnificence of this creation. And through that it tells us of the magnificence of the Creator. And he tells us that you are that breath. You are the, those photons. You are that light. You are that love. What an epic. What a story of the history of human. Of the history of you. If you would only open your minds and start to believe and see what we have in our midst today, the knowledge, the light, the love to change everything. And that is the epic journey we are on here at Faith United. And we will not leave any stones unturned to find the deep truth of the magnificent Creator God and his creation. Amen.